I'm Lisa Rennie and this is your Wake Up Call. Keep it real, powered by Ned Group Life. Let's make it happen. If you find it difficult to stay motivated, especially during difficult times, then don't go anywhere. Today we speak to Justin Cohen, author and speaker, on how to recondition our heads. Justin, what is motivation? Lisa, there was a study at Harvard University that set out to find the star performers, not just in business, but sport, art, science. And they found that, in fact, there was only one factor present in the top performers in all these diverse fields, and that was motivation. So what we know for sure is that motivation is the single most important ingredient of success. It's more important than IQ, it's more important than talent. It, and we've all seen talented, intelligent people who haven't achieved much. So what is motivation? Well, dictionary definition, motivation is an emotion that produces action. During difficult times, especially this year, having faced the recession, how do we keep motivated? Well, you know, I think what we need to understand is what we're motivated by. And human beings are motivated by one of only two things. There's only one of two reasons that we do anything, and that's pain and pleasure. We're motivated to reduce pain, and we're motivated to increase pleasure. And so if you're ever feeling demotivated, you need to go back to the reason, the why you're doing this. Very critical, why am I doing this? Imagine God comes out of the heaven and says, if you don't achieve this goal, you will die. Yeah. You think that maybe make the goal happen? Like lose those 10 kilograms? Yeah. Like just maybe. Why? Because they've got a powerful reason. And so we've got to go back to our reasons why we do stuff. And if those reasons aren't powerful enough, we need to look at them and we need to raise them up and remind ourselves if I don't lose this weight you know well research tells us we're going to lose eight years of our life if we're obese you know if I don't get that money I'm not going to get my kids to the best schools and they're not going to be able to thrive and so we've got to go back to why we're doing it that's what enables us to move forward do you think our expectations are too high sometimes you know it's such a paradox because you know Lisa we're in this field we're out there telling people you can be you know more beautiful and you can be fitter and you can be thinner and you can be richer and you know you could argue we're the ones out there who are sowing these seeds of dissatisfaction. So I, what I want to say is that, yes, you've got to be a little dissatisfied if you're ever going to achieve anything. Um, and, and yes, I think have expectations. You know, let's dream big. Let's do extraordinary things. You know, we need people out there to do big things because the world needs people who can make things happen. You know, a billion of the world's population goes to bed hungry every night. Okay, there's a lot that's wrong with the world. We need people out there who are inspired to go out there and change that. But in the process, don't allow yourself to get demotivated because one of the keys to success is dealing with setback, rejection, and failure. Entrepreneurs fail on average 3.8 times before they finally succeed. So we want to turn those setbacks into stepping stones by acknowledging that yes, that is part of the process of creation. Thomas Edison didn't say he failed to invent the light bulb nearly a thousand times. He said he just found nearly a thousand ways not to invent the light bulb. So if you know, you're trying this process and you're not losing weight, fine, great, now you know what doesn't work. So the key is really to never give up, that setbacks are inevitable. We've got to be prepared to give up sometimes on the method, on the process, but stay committed to the goal. To be flexible, pliable and moldable. Charles Darwin didn't say the fittest will survive, he said those who are most responsive to change will survive. If you get so doggedly attached to one particular process, you, I think you're going to be disappointed. But if you're flexible enough to realize, look, times have changed, things have changed, I need to try something else. If there was a standard recipe to achieving success, we probably wouldn't have this show because it would be so obvious we'd all be out there achieving success. So why are we having, you know, why have you got this great show? Because what, we, what we're doing is exploring different, uh, different ways of getting there. And some ways work for some people and some ways work for other people. And we've got to figure out what it is for us. And that is a process of trial and error. Our true wealth is inside. It's right here. And now for today's financial savvy tip. How much can you expect to pay for life insurance? Obtaining independent financial advice will ensure that you get the right amount of protection cover at the best possible price. Don't forget to log on to our website, keepitreal.coza, for the chance to win amazing daily and weekly prizes. So I'll leave you with this thought. Whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, either way, you are right. This is Lisa Rally from Keep It Real. See you next time. Keep it real. Brought to you by Ned Group Life. Let's make it happen.